cryptography came into use thousands of years ago and since then has been constantly developing along with human civilization. It has significantly influenced human society and sometimes even the course of history. Today, cryptography has become an important technology in the Internet society, which each individual relies on. One typical example is the RSA crypto scheme. It's often used in net shopping. A net shop prepares a public key containing the product N of two large primes P and Q. The net shop publishes this product N for its customers, but keeps the numbers P and Q secret. The customer encrypts his credit card number and purchase information with the public key and sends the encrypted data to the net shop. The net shop then derives a private key from the two primes by simple calculation to decrypt this data. Let's assume that a malicious hacker eavesdropped on the cipher text. The hacker knows the public key but has no idea of the private key. For decryption, the hacker needs to factorize N to find the two primes P and Q. This prime number factorization is a time-consuming task when N is large. Around the end of the last century, it was said that even the most powerful computers would take thousands of years to factorize a 200-digit number. Since then, rapid progress has been made in both soft and hardware. The article shown here reports on an experiment conducted in December 2009, where an international team of researchers succeeded in cracking a 768-bit RSA key within only two years using a novel decryption algorithm and a cluster of personal computers. And who knows, maybe there is an organization somewhere in this world that already uses even more powerful algorithms and computers. If a military intelligence had a method of breaking longer keys, they would never announce this fact. For that reason, the RSA scheme nowadays employs public keys with at least 1,024 bits. In recent years, fiber tapping devices have become readily available on the market, and it's indeed easy for hackers to tap the signal of a fiber. It's been actually reported that the fiber networks of some U.S. investment firms and Frankfurt Airport were intercepted in the past. Therefore, encryption is a must to guarantee safe transmission of sensitive data. Among all the methods of encryption ever devised, only one has been mathematically proven to be completely secure. It's called one-time pad. The key should be used only once and needs to be as long as the message to be sent. Although one-time pad is the ideal encryption method, the efficient distribution of such long keys remains an issue. In 1984, quantum key distribution, or for short, QKD, was proposed for the safe delivery of one-time pad. The most remarkable feature of QKD is the ability to detect any eavesdropping attempt on an optical fiber. In QKD, each bit of key information is carried by a single photon, which is the elementary energy particle of light and cannot be divided further. Any attempt of measuring a photon inevitably induces some change in the photon's state due to the uncertainty principle. This makes QKD secure against eavesdropping. The combination of QKD and one-time pad represents the so-called quantum cryptographic system. Unlike conventional schemes, the quantum cryptographic system will never be threatened by any future computer or hacking technology. Here you see a QKD system with its transmitter and receiver. The transmitter modulates the photon state to encode zero or one randomly and sends the modulated photons through a fiber. Due to the transmission loss, only a fraction of them arrive at the receiver. After the receiver has accumulated a large enough sequence of photon detections, the system performs error correction and privacy amplification to distill a secure key. 
During this distillation process, the number of dangerous insecure bits in a secret key can be completely removed, and the remaining secure key can then be stored in a PC and be used at any time. We are now tapping a small fraction of the photon stream in a fiber. We guide the photons to a photodetector and measure them. At the same time, we resend some other photons, trying carefully to hide our attack. However, the receiver immediately notices a disturbance by our attempt, which is reflected by the increase in the bit error rate. By switching to another secure fiber link, the transmission can go on unimpeded. Only when the error rate is below a certain threshold can the channel be considered secure. Research and development of QKD has been rapidly accelerating since the mid-1990s. Today, many institutes and companies around the world are working on the research, development, and commercialization of QKD. It will, however, take some more time until its widespread deployment. The major obstacle is the inevitable energy loss of light in optical fibers. For instance, over a distance of 50 kilometers, even with the best available fibers on the market, only one out of 10 photons will, on average, reach the receiver, determining the upper limit of the key generation rate. Since optical amplification cannot be applied to QKD, Developers currently adopt classical key encapsulation to relay the key over several QKD links, not longer than 50 kilometers, assuming that the relay nodes can be trusted and are physically protected. The project called Secure Communication Based on Quantum Cryptography, or SECOQC, carried out in Europe until 2008, was the first major attempt to develop QKD networks. The project partners demonstrated a large-scale QKD network with trusted nodes in and around Vienna. Typical link distances were a few tens of kilometers and the key generation rates were around one kilobit per second, providing roughly the speed for one-time pad encoding of voice data. During the last few years, NICT and its partners have been working hard to accomplish faster QKD over longer distances. Today, in 2010, the distance of 50 kilometers can be bridged with key generation rates of a few hundred kilobits per second. This corresponds to a level that is fast enough to allow one-time pad encryption of video data for teleconferencing. Today, the latest QKD technologies are to be deployed in a real network environment. A challenging experiment is conducted by the National Institute of Information and Communications Technology, NICT, with the Tokyo QKD Network Project. Japanese and European teams conduct and demonstrate secure network operation with QKD in Tokyo. NICT promoted research together with the Tokyo QKD network. NICT has been promoting research and development of quantum cryptography and communications from basic science to technological applications. It's been uh, 10 years uh, since we have started the national project in 2001. Our goal for this year, 2010, is to accomplish uh, secure TV conferencing in a metropolitan area network with a QKD one-time pad. To this end, NICT commissioned NEC, Mitsubishi, and NTT uh, to develop Metro QKD uh, systems. NICT itself uh, designed the whole network and uh, developed a superconducting photon detectors for high-speed and long-distance QKD. All the technologies are now combined in NICT Open Testbed Network, JGN2+, to form the Tokyo QKD Network. The Tokyo QKD Network consists of three-layer architecture with a key management server. In a quantum layer, each quantum link generates the key in its own way. In the key management layer, an agent locates at each node, receives secure keys, and manages them under the supervision of the key management server. In communication layer, 
applications such as T Secure TV conference are executed by one-time path encryption. This year, reading teams from Europe could join us by bringing their newest QKD systems to Tokyo to demonstrate secure network operations jointly. The test result will contribute to the standardization of quantum cryptography. NEC developed the key distillation engine and played the leading role in the industry government cooperation. NEC put 70% of its effort in the development of dedicated hardware engine for real-time and high-speed key distillation. Currently, a secure video transmission over 50 km using QKD cannot be achieved with conventional software-implemented distillation algorithms. Therefore, we developed a key distillation engine using large-scale feed programmable gate arrays and large-scale memories. Furthermore, we use wavelength multiplexing technology to increase the key generation rate. At each wavelength, we transmit signals at 1.2 gigabit per second. A huge amount of signals are input to key distribution engine via eight wavelength channels and secure key distilled at the required speed. At NICT's headquarters in Kogane, in the western suburb of Tokyo, the researchers are demonstrating the technology. Hello. 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 This is Tanaka speaking in Kogane Site 1. Uh, this is Tomoyasu. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. There is a sound They are sending a signal to the Otemachi oh, node in the center of Tokyo. Oh, oh that's, that's great. Yes. And now, uh, um, uh, the link this, distance uh, is about 45 kilometers, is, uh, and the data rate is getting close to 1 megabits per second, which allows teleconferencing in a stress-free manner. Generation system. Oh, Can you hear me? That's great. You're great? Yes. Uh, um, I, I, I just now, it looks uh, like an ordinary video, video transmission, but in fact, so the video uh, data is encrypted uh, with QKD. To the best of our knowledge, in oh, 2010, okay, there exists nowhere a comparable encryption system that transmits real-time QKD encrypted video data at similar rates. Mitsubishi Electric looked for the best combination of modern and quantum cryptography. As a group of experts of cryptography, we're interested in how to combine real-world cryptographic application with the QKD system by upgrading the secret key frequently by means of a QKD the security of modern crypto system can become even stronger. Uh, recently, we have developed a new secure mobile phone system which established a perfect voice encryption. It provides the key downloading service from QKD network and protects voice data using one-time path encryption, which is information theoretically secure so it cannot be broken by any means. In this way, the security of wired and wireless connections will be enhanced. NTT took on the challenge of long distance QKD. At NTT, we have been developing a system for intercity QKD by using our original protocol called differential phase shift QKD. Uh, this modulation format is often used in the advanced optical communication and allows a simpler implement implementation as well as a stable operation. Uh, our link is about 90 kilometers from Kongane to o Otemachi and, ba and back. The total link loss amounts about uh, 26 dB, which means that only 0.2% of the sent photons reach the detector. Uh, even under these harsh conditions, uh, we have been realized key distribution for the enc encryption of voice data. To this end, we apply a novel single photon detector uh, with superconducting uh, devices developed by NICT and key distillation engine developed by NEC. 
Research teams that were engaged in the Seco QC project also participated in the Tokyo QKD network project. Toshiba Research Europe developed the first stable high bitrate QKD system. So we first heard about the Tokyo QKD network in 2008 from Dr. Sasaki immediately after the Seco QC conference. And uh, he asked us if we'd be interested in taking part in a field trial of QKD. And uh, we said yes, of course, we'd be delighted to do that because uh, we're always interested in displaying the technology to potential users to demonstrate that it's a useful and a real technology. And uh, he gave us the challenge at that time of designing a system which has much better performance than any system in the past. And uh, I'm glad to say that we've met that challenge and uh, we brought a system to the, the network which is the highest bit rate which has been seen so far of 300 kilobits per second on the network or uh, one megabit per second over 50 kilometers of fiber. And furthermore, not only has it got a high bit rate, but it also works very stably and very reliably. And uh, high bit rates will be uh, important for a number of reasons. First of all, they enable new applications such as broadband secure communications using the one-time pad. And uh, we've seen an example of that during the UQCC demonstration. Uh, but secondly, higher bit rates are also important for improving the reliability on real fiber networks because they give us greater resilience to loss and noise on the fiber. And finally, um, higher bit rates will also lower the cost of QKD because it allows users to share the key material and therefore to share the cost of the QKD infrastructure. IDQ was first in successfully commercializing QKD. So ID Quantic is a company based in Geneva, Switzerland, a spin-off from the University of Geneva, and we focus on commercial applications of quantum key distribution. As the company, we realized the first application, first real-world application for this technology in 2007 when we secured the Swiss uh, federal elections uh, using our system. Our system basically consists of a combination of quantum key distribution and conventional encryption. And we've done a lot of work in trying to make uh, this uh, technology as simple as possible to, to deploy and to be uh, operated by network engineers so that you don't, you don't need a physicist to operate the system. In the context of the Tokyo QKD network, we shipped the boxes to Japan and they were installed in April of this year without any uh, need for calibration, alignment whatsoever. And uh, so the installation was really simple. And uh, because of this, it was a great pleasure to participate to this uh, Tokyo testbed. All Vienna took on the challenge of entanglement-based QKD. In Vienna, we have a collaboration between the University of Vienna, the Austrian Institute of Technology, and uh, the Academy of Sciences. Uh, we are working on developing entanglement-based quantum cryptography. Uh, this is a unique system. It is technically very challenging because it uses a, an idea by Einstein of spooky action at a distance between two particles. Uh, we are very glad to be here, to have been invited to participate in this really impressive demonstration of quantum cryptography. The entanglement-based system has some fundamental advantages because it is basically a system where you don't even have to trust the person you buy the system uh, from, you don't have to trust anyone in the end. So it, this is a security aspect. On the other hand, it is technically more challenging and it will take some more time to really be uh, mature for the market. But I'm optimistic that the future has opportunities for all kinds of different systems in quantum cryptography and quantum communication. In the Tokyo QKD network, a key relay experiment was also performed. The relay node in the middle of two connections possesses two keys, of which one key is encapsulated with the other key to guarantee its safe distribution from one connection to the next.
Under the assumption that the network nodes are physically secure and trustworthy, a key can be relayed over many connections and thus any distance. To manage effectively the key flow in the network, a key management server was introduced with the job to overlook the key generation process as well as key relaying and routing functions in the network. NICT and NEC jointly developed the application interface between the key management and QKD devices for enabling a smooth interconnection between Japanese and European QKD systems and in the long run also for contributing to the international standardization of QKD. In the future, the secure key will be shared between the network nodes via quantum entanglement. This quantum repeater technology will remove the requirement of physical security in the nodes and bring quantum key distribution to wide area networks. Optical fibers are more transparent than air on a crystal clear day. Nowadays, optical fibers run along with electric power cables, water and gas pipelines, linking governmental agencies, banks, hospitals, companies and homes. Photons travel through the fibers connecting those organizations and homes, thus bringing the quantum world into our daily lives. The first real-life example of quantum information technology is quantum cryptography, which was introduced here. It will be first used in high-end applications for government agencies and critical infrastructures. The transmission distances are not very large, but state secrets need to be tightly protected, which requires the most advanced encryption technology. The application area of QKD will then expand to financial, medical and business organizations, and eventually to private homes. But this may take another 10 years or more. At present, we grasp only a small part of the possibilities that the merger of quantum mechanics and information science will bring about. But in the future, outcomes of this merger will appear in many different aspects of our lives. Today, we take on the challenges of tomorrow to make each quantum communication dream come true.